Hello everyone, I'm Nurna Ningsi, the students of Yogyakarta State University. In this change, I would like to share you the slides about the role of ICT in ELT. So, let's check the slides out. First of all, let's see the topic about digital native. Prainsky, 2001 stated that 1. A new generation of learners is one which has grown up with information and communication technology ICT, as an integral part of their everyday lives. 2. It made them different from previous generations of students in the way they use ICT. 3. Education itself must fundamentally change to accommodate the skills and interests of these digital natives. Digital natives or net generation is the generation born roughly between 1980 and 1994 because of their familiarity with and reliance on ICT. They are described as living lives immersed in technology, surrounded by and using computers, video games, digital music players, video cams cell phones, and all the other toys and tools of the digital age. Some commentators argue that regardless of whether the digital native phenomenon is a generational trait or whether it is more due to exposure to ICTs, the education of tech-savvy students is still a major issue for education. This second prominent claim in the debate, that education must fundamentally change to accommodate digital natives' interests, talents and preferences, therefore requires exploration. Virtually everyone agrees that computers offer amazing new possibilities. They are powerful tools that make our work more efficient, perhaps richer or more comprehensive, often more fun. As each year passes, computer technology becomes smaller, cheaper, more mobile, more colorful, more user-friendly, and more powerful. Sometimes new technologies offer possibilities we'd never considered, changing the very content and output of our work. Change is part of our everyday lives, but the main systems and structures within our society in general, and education in particular, are still not set up in such a way as to recognize people within the organization must alter their working practice if change is to be implemented. Their individual attitudes and beliefs are therefore important and seen as one of the main goals in implementing change. The implementation of Information and Communications Technology ICT, to enhance and extend teaching and learning across a whole school has proved more challenging than was initially anticipated when it first featured on the educational agenda in the 1960s. In addition to generic change management issues, there are a number of specific factors to consider in relation to the implementation of ICT for teaching and learning in a school situation. These include the fundamental need for staff and students to have access to computers, and for staff to be able not just to operate them, but to have understanding of the pedagogy required to use them to meet teaching and learning needs. The teacher has not only to learn the new set of skills required to use and apply the technology with confidence, but also to reconceptualize learning in order to work with the technology, in order to understand more about what might influence successful ICT implementation it was essential to focus on a school which had moved on from the early stages of ICT implementation and where there was a good degree of ICT penetration across the curriculum, easier access to interesting online resources and more synchronous tools allowed for, at first, text-based chat and email exchanges between classes and learners in different parts of the world. Common teacher projects at this time were largely electronic counterparts to the more traditional pen pal exchange, with email or text chat taking the place of paper-based communications between learners. ICT has a major influence in human life, especially in the field of language teaching. There is a difference between language teaching using technology and language teaching that does not use technology. One of the differences can be seen in two types of discussion groups, 
namely face-to-face -face discussion group and electronic discussion group. Face-to-face -face discussion group is a discussion group that does not use technology. Electronic discussion group is a discussion group that uses technology assistance. Research result is 1. The electronic discussion group has better participation than the face-to-face -face discussion group. 2. The discussion group uses language more complex than the face-to-face -face discussion group. 3. The face-to-face -face group tends to use language briefly and informally. Meanwhile, the electronic discussion group used long sentences when speaking and they also used formal language. Face-to-face -face group and electronic group have different characteristics. An electronic group can be selected if students want to develop writing skills. In the meantime, face-to-face -face groups can be selected if students want to develop speaking skills. The influence of ICT can also be seen from the influence of using Facebook to promote Korean EFL learners' intercultural competence. Facebook use has successfully given the students in an EFL setting an online environment of intercultural communication with the speakers of the target culture, developments in information and communication technologies, ICT, have impacted on ELT over the past three decades. Of particular interest is the effect on classroom practice, and on the types of materials available for tea this takes us from the middle 1980s until the late 1990s Qing and learning. Fundamental change offers a wider range of tools and development opportunities for teachers and learners. Finally, we take a brief look at what the future of technologies might hold for ELT, at the same time. Teachers learned how to subscribe to early discussion groups in their subject areas. Not only discussing teaching itself, but also often leading to problem-solving discussions for people new to technology. What does the future hold for ELT and technology? Although it is difficult to predict the future, there are some trends within education that will surely impact upon ELT. In some cases, these trends are already starting to appear within our field. We see that developments in technology since the 1980s have directly affected ELT materials and practice in a number of ways. Some of these developments, such as the effect of corpus linguistics on materials today. Others, such as the development of the CD-ROM have become increasingly sophisticated with the addition of video and 3D games. At the same time, we see that increasing access to the Internet, and the rise of Web 2.0 communities and tools, has meant that teachers and learners can not only access a wealth of language learning material online, but can take part in online communities, and produce their own online content. More recently, with the advent of mobile technologies, we see the adaptation of learning materials for delivery via these devices, as well as an emphasis on learner autonomy and the continued opportunities for learning that our students now have outside of the classroom walls. The blended learning model also places emphasis on students learning outside of the traditional classroom space. Through all of these changes, though, one could argue that the teacher's role has remained constant to a certain extent, that of facilitating and guiding our students in the language learning process, providing them with the best possible materials and approaches that are currently within our reach. With technology, that reach has become wider than ever before. Well everyone, that's all the several explanation about the role of ICT in LP. Hopefully it will be useful for us, especially for English language teacher. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.